Hello everyone and welcome. Um, my name is Tanya Jinnat Timms and I'm the Our School Alumni Manager at both North Geelong Secondary College and Matthew Flinders Girls Secondary College. Um, and today we are hosting a trades talk with two local tradies and alumni of both of those schools. Um, we have Matthew Flinders Girls Secondary College alumna Jasmine Anderson from the class of 2014, who has nearly completed her bricklaying apprenticeship. And we also have Daniel Nowen from the class of 2018, who is nearly in his third year apprenticeship as a boiler maker. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, for taking time um, out of your busy schedules um, to hopefully um, give students a little advice about the choices or decisions you made uh, in school and when you left school um, to get you to where you are now. Um, so we might take you back to your secondary school years um, at Matthew Flinders and North Geelong. Um, what type of student were you? We might start with you, Daniel. What sort of student were you? What subjects did you like? Um, what teacher is most memorable or is there a memorable moment that you might want to uh, reflect on? Um, so I will say my favourite subject was probably business management. Um, simply because I can't really describe why it was favourite subject. It was just one of those subjects that uh, seemed to click, if that makes sense. Um, I probably won't describe what I was like as a student because I'm probably not the ideal uh, role model in that respect. <laughs> it's okay. We all, we all change. We all learn from those um, poor choices that we sometimes make. I'm not going to say I was the worst, but I definitely wasn't the best, so I might leave it at that. <laughs> what about you, Jasmine? Um, what type of student were you? What subjects did you like? Any memorable moments? Uh, I'm with um, Daniel. I wasn't a great student. I hated school, like every aspect of school. Um, I really did enjoy sports, uh, particularly at the inner school uh, sports days, football mainly. Um, I did play cricket and. In year 12, Mr. Dyson did talk me into playing soccer, which I had no clue how to play. Um, my fond memory of school would probably be year 12, just leading up to the end of the year and getting to celebrate the last couple of years with the girls was pretty amazing, to be honest. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, certainly. Um, and... Obviously, um, you've done a bit since leaving. What um, what did you decide? What what did you both decide to do um, when you finished school? So, um, was there a course that you did, um, or was there something actually at secondary school that you did to to lead to where you are now? Um, and also, what sparked your interest in your pathway? Um, Jasmine, did you want to start this time? Yeah, so when I was really young, I used to be obsessed with bricks and particularly the mortar between the bricks and like how uh, it actually got there. So I was really like, wow, I really want to learn how to do this. Um, in year 10, I spoke to Miss Wright and she was just like, hey, the Gordon has an opening. If you want to go, it's a pre-up for bricklaying. So I walked in there, a class full of boys, the only girl and um Pretty much showed them a thing or two on Brick Lane and, yeah, I sort of kicked it off from there. So did that make you realise that that's what you wanted to pursue once you finished school? I was still up in arms. Like, I wasn't too sure if that's definitely what I wanted to do. So, like, I did do a personal training course, but I absolutely hated that. That was only to get me to pass year 12. Um but, yeah, then a couple of years later down the track, I was just like, no, I really want to get back into Brick Lane. So I did, yeah, finally. Fantastic. And are you still the only girl amongst a lot of men or have you seen a bit uh, of a shift? So there's probably a lot more girls now than when I first started. When I first started, I did not see a single female on a job site. Uh, currently, I know that the Geelong Women in Trades are building more of a network to get girls into a trade um so I do I do quite see a lot of females on site now um so that's that's really exciting as well definitely um and Daniel what sparked your interest in becoming a boiler maker um what did you do something at school um you know that 
led you into doing your apprenticeship? Tell us about it. Um, so I suppose what sort of sparked the interest in a metal fabrication trade, I'll say in broad terms, was my my dad's a fitter. Uh, and he was working at the Alcoa Point Entry Smelter. Um, and, you know, he used to come home and talk about his day. And that, that was what sparked my interest in metal fabrication. And for a long time, I actually wanted to be a fitter like him. Um, it only sort of... I sort of fell into boiler making in looking for a fitting apprenticeship, um, which I found through a certificate two I did alongside year 11 and 12. I, um, damn, I forget what it was called. Is it certificate, two in, certificate two in engineering studies or something, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing that alongside my VCE and through that and the careers counsellor at school, um found the apprenticeship with the mob and Matt currently taught in engineering. Oh fantastic. So and that started the apprenticeship. So were you with them as part of your engineering studies whilst you were at school or did you join them once you finished year 12? Yeah, I've joined them once I finished year 12. My certificate two was done at the Geelong Industry Trade Training Centre, I think. I think that's the name of the joint. Yes. Um so yeah I did that completely separately before I started my apprenticeship. Um, and then, yeah, sort of as year 12 wrapped up for me, landed the apprenticeship just in time sort of thing. So Excellent. And you mentioned in, some, in your correspondence with me that that Certificate 2 in Engineering Studies um, actually fast-tracked your apprenticeship? Yep. Is that correct? Yep. So that knocked... Uh, pretty much my first year of my apprenticeship out of the ballpark, basically straight off the bat. Um, a lot of the units you get signed off for with that in the Certificate 2 translate straight to the Certificate 3. Um, I think I only did one or two units in my first year and I was straight to second year in terms of being at school. Excellent. And were you aware of that at the time or was it just a bonus when you started your apprenticeship? That was a bonus when I started my apprenticeship, I'll admit that. Excellent. Well done. Um, okay, so um, looking at your work now, um, can you please share exactly what you do, like maybe what a typical day or week looks like for each of you um, and the desired outcomes of your work? So what you know, what's the purpose of your trade um, and what, what it looks like day to day? Um, Daniel, would you like to start this time? Yep. So... Uh, a typical day for me will be an early start, which is, as far as I know, pretty common across the trade. Um, I can be doing anything from fabricating bridge segments to pressure vessel barrels, um, fitting nozzles into the barrels of the pressure vessels. Um, I am mostly pressure vessel related work with the shed I'm in at the moment. Um, but due to the current global global um, circumstances, we're uh, doing a bit more structural work, which is bridges, gantries and whatnot. Um, yeah, so my day's pretty I don't I can't say I've got a, a typical day to day. That's not the same every day. It's always something different, which is good. I like different all the time. Um, but it's all in some ways it's all a lot of repetitive repetitive work as well. Um, it's just, you know, one day you'll go and mill some plate, the next day you'll weld that plate, the day after that you might, you know, have to grind it out or something. It's always different. Fantastic. And um, can you share a bit about the project that you're currently working on? Uh, I'm across about four or five different projects at the moment. Um, so the one I'm going to be working on tomorrow um, I've just been trained on our post-weld heat treat furnace, which is, as far as I'm aware, the biggest in the southern hemisphere. Um, wow. So what I'll be doing is warming up steel inside to about 600 degrees and holding that for about an hour and a half. Wow. And Jasmine, what, what does your day or week look like as a bricklayer? Um, can you maybe share a bit about 
maybe something about Brick Lane that people might not know about? Uh, Brick Lane's pretty repetitive. Uh, so we do the early starts on site, 7 a.m. Generally, I'm in between labouring and laying bricks. So if I'm labouring straight up off the bat, I'll be making about three or four batches of mud. So um, get that ready for the boys. They'll either start setting up or start laying while I'm mixing. Uh, as soon as that's done, if there's scaffold that needs to be set, I'll set that. If there's uh, the next run that needs to be loaded, I'll quickly load that. Then I'll jump on the wall, um, try and get some bricks in as much as possible. Um, yeah, yeah. if cuts need to be done, like I'll be on the saw or the grinder, quickly doing those as well. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty basic. Like everything's the same day in, day out, really. Like we might have a couple of little different things to do like I've previously done fireplaces and um, just piers getting them up or window sills so yeah like as I said it's just repetitive stuff really yeah yes. the projects might change slightly so do you mainly do domestic work or industrial uh we do a bit of everything really at the moment we uh we've just started uh, a retirement village down in uh, I think Ocean Grove maybe yeah, yep. so we're down there, but we've just finished about two, two or three units in uh, Geelong West and done a massive double story as well. So, yeah, like everything changes, everything changes. We've done scout halls, all sorts of cool stuff. Oh, cool. Very good. Um, so we constantly hear about having a trans transferable skill set um, and how important that is, um, particularly now. Um, what skills or attributes are important to your profession? Um, and, and you know, you might even want to discuss, Daniel, some of your voluntary work as well. Um, Daniel is a CFA um, volunteer for the Bannockburn um, Brigade. Um, so maybe touch on some of those. We might start with you, actually, Daniel, and touch on some of those skills that you've, you've learnt through your your um, voluntary work and how they apply to your your paid work as well. Yep. So uh, I can't say I've ever found a use at work for rolling out a hose and making something that's really hot, cold, really fast, like we do with the Banningburn tankers. Um, but when it comes to things like radio communications, uh, mapping, what else have we done? There's been a few things, changing O-rings in hoses and stuff like that. It's all... And they all sound like little things, but especially the radio comms and the mapping, they're really handy wherever you go. Um, I'm also an ex Air Force cadet, um, so mapping's a little bit up my up my alley in some ways. Uh, I've been doing it for a while, um, and it just comes in handy everywhere. Like we do it all the time at work. We'll, we'll pull out a map and have a look. You know, we've got a job that's going to a site on the back of a truck, and you know, we've only got a grid reference to work off. Well, straight off the bat, thanks to the CFA and the Australian Air Force cadets, I know what how to work out a grid reference and where it is and, you know, where the truck's potentially going. And I can point out that it won't fit down that street or, you know, that street's going to be really busy at this time sort of thing. So mappings come in really handy um, in all aspects of my life. But a lot of the transferable skills that I've got have actually come from work. Um, things like welding certificates, uh, operating the oven, the post-weld heat treat oven, um, sub-arc welding, rolling, all that sort of stuff. That's all. They're all skills that workshops around Australia will recognise and are looking for, especially if you're a plate roller um, or a sub-arc welder. They're two very highly sought after skills. I know Thorntons are looking for plate rollers and sub arc welders all the time. And what about soft skills like, um, you know, communication, people skills, um, uh, yep. problem solving, all those sort of skills? Is there anything that sticks out um, or, you know, that you can think of that is crucial to your work um, that and that you could use across your paid work and voluntary work or other jobs, in fact? Yep. So uh, one of the big things I started figuring out when I started my apprenticeship with Thornton's was that working as a team is pretty crucial in there. Uh, and that was later reinforced when I joined the CFA. 
Um, as everybody knows from the last bushfire season, we had crews out there for ages and ages and ages fighting those massive fires we had. Um, without teamwork, none of that would have happened. Um, you know, and that's that's something that I'm picking up as I progress through the CFA uh, training and at work. Um, everything's just heaps easier as a team. Um, you know, it's better for you, it's better for the workplace, just all that sort of stuff. Um, hand in hand with that is people skills. I sort of can't stress enough how important having people skills can be, um, especially with little things like tone of voice and um, body posture. The way you the way you stand, the way you talk, it's all interpreted very differently. Um, and having an understanding of how how that's interpreted can can help you kick goals. It can be sometimes be the difference between being you know just another apprentice or there's that apprentice you know so definitely thanks daniel and um jasmine can you think of any um uh, skills or attributes that are important in brick lane and that are uh, potentially transferable between jobs yeah so definitely uh time management so we're generally normally on a time frame of when to get jobs done and you know everyone knows what's what needs to be done so uh keeping up to speed with with what's going on uh, communication is one of the biggest ones, obviously. So you need to know what needs to be done next, what needs to be ready to go. Like generally speaking, if you've got cuts for for a run, you're gonna make sure they're they're obviously they're ready. Um, punctuality, like rocking up on time and making sure you got all your tools and on proper work gear, like on, on commercial sites, high vis is, is a must. Hard hats, obviously. So uh, yeah, we've got to make sure all that there. Obviously, with um, uh, lots of power tools as well. We've got to make sure everything's all uh, equipped with the right tags, test tags and stuff, make sure everything's pretty well set to go and we're not going to be pulled aside and be like, you know, what, what's to go here? Um, and just problem solving in general. Like if, if, if something's not right, we've got to figure out a way how to quickly solve that and keep going with the job so we could get it all done in time, yeah. Definitely. Um, thank you for that. Um, and... Uh, looking at your of oh, the building construction um, manufacturing industry, uh, what where do you see? Do you see that there's um, it's a growth industry, or do you think there's um, a, a, a trade shortage at the moment? Um, what are your predictions there? I, I reckon that there is a bit of a trade shortage. Um, sometimes we do struggle to find a labourer that actually wants to learn, and you know they they don't really care too much. They're just in it for the job really but uh yeah sometimes it, it's hard just to get a hard worker that actually wants to come in they, they want to learn a trade sometimes we get someone in for half an hour sometimes we get someone in for a day and then they just call it quits because they just don't want to do it um it's interesting that you say that because uh, um, another a colleague of mine that ran an interview um, recently, a trade talk in interview, um, the same thing was raised that it's really hard to find not only workers but good workers um, with a good yeah. work ethic. Um, so very interesting that you said that, Jazz. Yeah, no, it, it is incredibly hard. And Daniel, is it a growth industry? Is there a shortage um, in relation to trades? Yep, so I sort of touched on that before um, when I said we're always looking for plate rollers and sub arc welders. There are, those are two sets of skills that are very highly sought after. There are a set of skills you could go anywhere with, but there's only a limited number of people around that actually have those skills or are actually any good at rolling plate or running a sub arc. Um, so there's definitely, a, a, I'll say, a skills shortage in that respect that... Um, Specialised equipment operators are, are heavily sought after, and if you're any good with it, you can get a job in basically any workshop that's got a set of rollers or a sub arc. Um, as for it being a growth industry, um, I'd say it is. Um, I do Thorntons do a lot of government work, state government work. Um, I touched on bridges. We've been working on a couple of overpasses for the Metro Tunnel project. Um, and we see this all start before anything gets to site. Um, once it leaves our workshop, you know, that means when if we push it out on time, on budget, 
that means jobs out there for the people that install it, the crane operators, the spray painters, the transport industry as well, who have to transport the bridge segments down to site. Um, so there's a, there's a massive flow and effect when we put one bridge out, it puts, at a guess, another two, 300 jobs out there as well in just finishing what we started by building the bridge. So I definitely say there's, it's, it's growing. Um, as for how much this pandemic affects it, though, well, that's the question to be answered, I suppose. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, and with, you know, government funding um, to, you know, ensure that uh, apprenticeships are finished and started and there's skilled workers out there, hopefully that will um, have a positive impact beyond COVID. Um, finally, last question. Um just any words of wisdom um, that you'd like imp to impart on um, students? Um, any advice to prepare them for the world of work um, or, you know, your job specifically? Um, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, Jasmine, anything that you can pass on? Um, I'd say don't be scared to follow your dreams. Um, if, if it's something that, for me, a male dominated trade or industry just go for it they're not going to knock you back they'll help you out as much as possible steer you in the right direction and make sure you're comfortable so yeah definitely definitely follow your heart and do what you want to do and and daniel thanks jasmine yeah pretty much along the same lines if uh if you want to go and work as a fitter don't let anyone stop you go and work as a fitter or you know boiler maker you want to work as that don't let anyone stop you go out there and get it um you know, you can't sit back and wait for it to come you come to you because that'll never happen. Um, you've you've got to get out there and go and get it yourself to start with. Um, and when you get it, give it a red hot crack, have a real go. Um, you know, and you should be pretty right. And any suggestions, Daniel, uh, in regards to um, under undertaking vol voluntary work like you have? How is that? How would that be valuable to a student? Um, I suppose it just gives you that, uh, in terms of the CFA especially, um, it gives you that, I don't want to say third world view of it all, but that third perspective of, of life. It's not just home and school or home and work. It's homework and the CFA in my case. Um, and not only does it give you that, that extra port to, to sort of to vent, relax and um you know to put in have have a bit of a play especially with the big red shiny trucks there's a lot of different aspects of being a firefighter in particular that you, you start using everywhere especially when it comes to community engagement skills decision making under stress all that sort of stuff um it's all stuff that just starts naturally creeping into your life naturally you start using um decision making under stress i can say i've done had to use um and thanks to the cfa i was able to put a, a safe safe thought process in the application so there's yes, a lot so of hidden yes. benefits yeah and just giving back and, and doing good surely that yeah, yeah it. makes yeah the end goal yeah, and as well of the cfa is obviously to put out the red hot things so you know yes why wouldn't you want to do that yeah, definitely. Well done. Um, well, thank you, at both of you, for, as I said before, giving up your time um, to, to be here and to pass on your words of wisdom to students um, and to give insight into your specific trades. Um, I hope and I know students will learn a lot from hearing that firsthand from you. Um, so thank you. And hopefully one day you can return to your schools, even though you may not have been the most um, perfect students. That's OK. You are always welcome back to North Geelong and Matthew Linders.